Uh, congratulations, everybody, on the show. Uh, I've, been, I've been really enjoying the episodes. Uh, Jamie, let's start with you. This is the uh, the first uh, trans character that uh, Lana Wachowski has written and created uh, for any medium. How does that feel? How does that feel for 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 you to take the role and to to uh, be front and center on a big show like this? Well, I mean, I'm incredibly honored. I mean, you know, it's it's. I didn't realize when. When I read the first couple of scripts, um, you know, and and I during the audition process, and when I met them, I didn't realize how autobiographical certain parts of the script were, um, and so it w I was incredibly honored um, that she trusted me, um, you know, with her parts of her story, um, and also you know just the 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 task, um, you know, that the arc that Nomi goes on is so incredible um, and you know for, as an actor to be able to show all of those different things you know like Nomi gets to do stunts and and have hot sex and you know get you know like handcuffed to a hospital bed and you know it, it was such a challenge to do all of that and I'm just so grateful that the W's and JMS um, trusted me with with this character with um, you know telling this story. And it's so fresh on the show too, and I uh, I really got to commend everybody involved. I mean, the whole concept is so surreal, but the thing that I like the most about the show is we ain't seen nothing like this before, which is really cool. Um, all right, uh, Duna, you've worked with the Wachowskis a couple of times already. What's different about uh, Sense Eight? Sense Eight. <laughs> mm. Well, Lana and Andy always bring such a new things. I've been working with them for three films now. Mm -hmm. I saw when I did Cloud Atlas, I saw it was once in a lifetime experience because it was it was amazing. I loved working with them and I loved the experience. And Jupiter Sending, wow, it was something else. And Sensei is another level. And always they just they never stop amazing me. And we traveled eight countries, nine cities. And we met, we collaborated with all the different like local teams, local productions, and we had to adjust to all the different cultures. It was really, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Oh, awesome. You sound a little tired. <laughs> no, 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 but everybody's at a different time right now, so I appreciate that everybody's on at the same time here right now. It's really cool. Oh, actually, Tina's time is quite tough now, actually, right? Oh, yeah? Tina, what? 3 a.m. 3 a.m. That's <laughs> awesome. Tina's hardcore. <laughs> well, Tina, I, one of the things that I love about your segment in the show, and it really feels like you're watching nine movies at once or something, uh, but I love the, the Bollywood kind of stuff that they go into. And I know that that's a bit risky, but it must also be incredibly fun to, you know, be involved with these dance numbers and stuff. Uh, I used to be terrified of dance until about um, two years ago. I wouldn't dance in a club, I wouldn't dance anywhere. I was just very, very, very shy, very afraid of dance. Um, and then a film that I did before Sense8 required me to dance, and I said I will not make a, my, a fool of myself on the international screen so I, I went for like a few months of dance rehearsals and then um, Sense8 uh, had a dance sequence as well so you know luckily I was already prepped for that um, so we had like a week of rehearsals before the shoot mm -hmm. began so you know I had my time to get it right um, but it was with the choreographer I had worked with already and he's just really amazing so it was fun to do it though it's a, it's a very different experience shooting it for uh, the west because yeah. in India we kind of cut the song up and shoot like a line or two at a time but here you shoot the entire song in one cut in one yeah. in one take which is which is quite crazy which is like a stage performance but you know once you get the energy going it's it's fun to keep going yeah and it's you know a welcome kind of uh, breath of fresh air i think within the sort of tenseness of the show and all of these crazy things going on and then we've got this ornate beautiful Big wedding and, yeah it's really cool now <laughs> yeah, amo 
Yeah, you drive a, a bus uh, named after uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and yes. I'm uh, I'm wondering if you've heard from him or if the show has heard from him. I mean, that's a pretty <laughs> tremendous honor. I spoke to Jean last night. Um, he's very happy with everything that's going on. <laughs> uh, and we're going to be up for martial arts lessons really soon. Uh, back, tough shape. I t- you know, I actually tweeted him two days ago because I, I didn't know Jean-Claude Van Damme had a Twitter, and then someone tweeted and like, hey, Jean, meet. Your other guy, like the black guy version of you. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. Let me tweet him. I tweeted him, and uh, no, I've not, I've not heard back from Jean, but I'm sure I will in the future. The Wachowskis, the W's are pretty powerful. That's awesome. <laughs> tell us about shooting your uh, almost. Tell, tell us about shooting some of the the action sequences because you turn into uh, a tremendous badass. You actually live up to the name of Van Damme very well. Yeah, I, I, do you know what I found? Do you know I found that wonderful because you know. Like here's this guy you meet and he's a sweetheart essentially. He's an open heart, sweetheart, open book, and his whole trajectory is about, you know, trying to save his mother and be hopeful in life. Um, but one of the things um, me and the W spoke about and and Tom uh, Tom Twyko is that what happens is what happens when his mother's put under threat, and what happens when his mother no longer possibly exists, and the darkness that may follow in his path up because all of his hope is based on his mother living, you know? And so to go through those action sequences is kind of, I think, you know, if we continue on with the show, is a, a kind of a, a glimpse of where his character could go. And I think that's brilliant uh, by the W's as well, you know, that this this kind of mm-hmm. they're multifaceted everyone in this cast, everyone in the and every one of the characters are real human beings. And I love that. Yeah. You know, who they are on the surface is not necessarily who they are throughout the whole spectrum of their being, which is humanness essentially. So I really loved it. Awesome. Thank you, Amel. Yeah. Now Tuppence, yeah. uh, you've also worked with the W's, which I'm yeah. going to start calling them the W's from now on. It's very yeah. cool. Uh, but uh, tell us about uh, the, the new experience of uh, working on a on a series like this. One of the probably the most ambitious series is a series I've ever heard of. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I worked on Jupiter Ascending, I thought that was ambitious. Um, but obviously, I hadn't seen anything till. Sensei. Um, it was a very different character and a very different experience. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was in and out of Jupiter Ascending, um, and it was more the storylines felt quite separate. Um, whereas Sensei obviously was so interconnected, and, and we were literally traveling from country to country like a circus troupe. So we were constantly together, um, and we really did become so close and. Yeah, I, I loved it. It was like making 12 mini films as opposed to TV. And because Netflix is a sort of new platform for viewing, it doesn't feel like it's either TV or film. So it, that was kind of a unique thing. And um, and and they just that they just have such freedom because they're not censored. They you can kind of make what you want to make. And I feel like uh, the W's were given the chance to just make something they'd always wanted to to do from the heart no holds barred like they, as they wanted to do it um, and I think that people have really responded to that so yeah I mean I, I loved every second of it plus I would never get to play Icelandic ever probably if it wasn't for them and how are your DJ skills coming along I mean pretty terrible um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I mean I, I was kind of um, crapping myself a bit um, when I had to do that scene because they told the um, the audience in the club that I was a real DJ. Oh shit, um, that's awesome. Yeah, and so I was like, ooh, uh, I thought they knew that, um, that they, they thought we were filming for like a DJ's music video as opposed to filming for a uh, film, so um, yeah, that was quite terrifying, but. Awesome. Um, well, well, speaking of uh, lack of censorship, Max, uh, you got to show the whole shebang in this show. <laughs> yeah. uh, tell, tell us about that day. The, the whole shebang, what do you mean, uh, what scene? Your penis. Yes. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, right. I uh, almost forgot. Oh, yeah. yeah. the world what you're all about, my friend. No, I was very um, yeah, <laughs> terrified, afraid of that day. Especially because uh, in India, uh, if you ask about the law, it's forbidden to be naked in public, you know. Oh, wow. And we were concerned about, uh, yeah, maybe we had to leave that place or I don't know. Um, yeah, but they organized it very well and it was like... Uh, it was a cool breeze that night. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it felt kind of secure, and so yeah, I just did it, and I trusted them. <laughs> and um, 
yeah, like Brian said, uh, if the context is right, you know, if the story is right, the storyline, um, yeah, if uh, I give them what they need, you know. Well, I, I mean, I think the whole show is is gutsy, and that ratcheted up another notch right there. But I, what I also like is that it's it's not just movies sort of playing concurrently because everybody's life is a story, but it's genres as well, and you get to play kind of a uh, a caper movie. And sort of, I, I think of Ocean's Eleven or or uh, Michael Mann's Thief. Is it cool to kind of have the, this badass tough guy in the middle of all of this? Definitely. For me, it's like totally new. I mean, working on this level and then at the same time uh, playing a character that is so uh, mean and full of uh, anger and I don't know, like, um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's like a, it's the biggest gift I have uh, received. Uh, yeah, in my career, I would say, because uh, such a big audience uh, combined with uh, this awesome. kind of... Huh? What that's you awesome. saying? I said that's Can you awesome. Hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> and yes, and I'm very happy of it because uh, I used to play um, the good guys, the heroes, you know, and now I'm allowed to play this kind of characters. Well, you're doing a great, great job. job. You're a different guy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Really. All right, thank you. Thank you. Brian, you play a character that I think a lot of television audiences would be somewhat familiar, but obviously you're thrown into uh, this crazy web. Uh, tell us about your your journey and some of the surprises that you got as you flip through the pages of the script. Um, I guess I always thought of Will as um, uh, just like a spoke in a wheel, you know? Mm -hmm. like I think all these characters in some way are... Um, uh, they're, they're they're complete in themselves, but they're also part of this the sensate personality. They all sort of contribute something. So yeah, I think there is the part of Will that's that's very familiar to TV audiences, which is the Chicago cop. Yeah. But um, what I liked is that is that the more we go into the story and the more you see what he's up against and what his childhood was like, it, it's nice to go from like something that's kind of a cliche to something that's very particular, and uh, yeah. that's something I like to do. Yeah, I mean, this one thing that the show is doing is that it shows that not every person is easy to read and easy to figure out, and that is particularly uh, evidenced in your character, Miguel. Uh, I want to hear about how your character has been received in Mexico. Well, I'm I'm from Spain. I'm right now I'm in Madrid, so I I don't know I don't know about I haven't heard anything yet. But <laughs> I can sometimes I receive uh, messages. Yeah, I get they, they are positive messages uh, because they come to my my account, my yeah. <laughs> account or whatever. But I hope I hope they 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 are receiving it in a good way. Um, Mexico was one of the first. It was the first Latin America uh, country to uh, to allow the mar the gay marriage. Mm -hmm. But at the at the same time, is um, every two days die a person because of sexual because of his sexual orientation. Right. So there is a lot of contrast in there. So I hope um, this helps because obviously, if you want to enjoy all of the world that the Wachowskis are putting there, and um, it's a um, very interesting, uh, very cool and fun to watch. But at the same time, you have to understand all the characters and you have to see all the vulnerabilities and you realize what, what you're watching it how close you are to them so you start to understand things that maybe you didn't understand before so I hope many people are more more uh, relaxed in that sense yeah well that's that's the beauty of the show it really is a, a humanizing endeavor and I applaud all of you guys thank you very much thank you, thank you very thank much you. Yes, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.